Crossroads Media. What is going on, everybody? Welcome on in to Sports Talk with Broads. Obviously, a very heavy Sixers weekend, but let's not forget about the fight in Phils who played the Boston Red Sox, and unfortunately, they lost two of three. Their starting pitching hasn't been good enough. They got the good old feel-good Sunday afternoon win where Taiwan Walker was solid, where he did not walk a lot of batters. The splitter was more utilized, and he put this team in a fantastic spot. The pitching staff allowed one earned run on Sunday. That's going to put you in a good position to win. You know what's not? Close to a 10 ERA, and that's what was happening prior to snapping this losing skid. That's why you were failing. It wasn't the lineup. I know that's going to hurt a lot of you out there. You aren't going to win no matter what your batting order is if your pitchers are throwing close to a 10 ERA. Bailey Falter gets smoked. Zach Wheeler wasn't polished enough. He went five and a third, so couldn't even get you through six. Supposed to be a top guy. Let's look at it this way. They won 6-1 on Sunday, right? If that's the pitching performance you get in the other games, well, you scored four runs, you scored three runs, you win those games. That's what we need to target. I'm okay with Rob going back to Kyle Schwarber at the top of the lineup because that got you to the World Series last year. And I'm okay with him realizing that not right now. I wouldn't be shocked if later on in the season they eventually go back to it once Kyle Schwarber wakes up a tad. But if you want to throw stop back up there and have Kyle Schwerber bat fifth right now and work with something else, I'm cool with it. It starts with the guys on the mound for me. And you have a lot of great talent with a lot of versatility with what you can do with constructing an order. There's not really many wrong answers. I wasn't even that aggravated with Stott and Marsh being both out of the lineup against Chris Sale. Harrison did get a hit. Sosa did do solid. Guthrie was the one that was rougher. And then just setting a tone out in center field and Kyle Schwarber, Zach Wheeler now is forced to throw more pitches. I guess I just wasn't as pissed off as everybody else because I was looking more at the issue at starting pitching. My focus was so heavily zoned in. I had my pitching goggles on, and and maybe that's a flaw of mine. Maybe that was the wrong way to go about business this weekend. But that's constantly where my mind went. Full disclosure on Saturday... I had a wedding, so I went back and watched the extended highlights. That was eight, nine minutes long, and that's how I digested that game. So it's not the same as the full experience of watching the nine, but what do you you want me to do here? I had to go to a wedding. So I missed Bryce Harper's home run in real time. Superhuman. I'm stunned, but I'm not stunned that he looks this comfortable this early. Tommy John surgery, not too long ago, and already stepping in and shining. But you still see common problems with this team that are controllables. Outfield play is tough. Running the bases, Nick Castellanos going for second base, deadly. That's why you're 16 and 19. The controllables, whether they do too much, they're not communicating properly out in center field. I guess there's two ways to look at the Sosa Guthrie thing. I guess just in general on the lineup, Harrison for Bryson Stott. They never faced Chris Sale. Stott, Marsh. It's a 
tough, 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 tough ask. Also, though, we've seen these two have success against lefties. And how do you know what they are capable of doing against Chris Sale unless they are awarded an opportunity to face him? I don't know if that's the difference in the game or not. I don't. Your guy, Zach Wheeler, didn't shove as much as he needed to shove. And Chris Sale could have easily destroyed Bryson Stott and could have easily ripped right through Brandon Marsh. You could flip the coin here and and say, well, what if they went yard? What if it was a lefty-lefty bomb to right field? Okay. Maybe. I'm staring right in the face, though, at getting, starting, pitching out of this funk. Have we seen consistently Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler put it together? Nope. Whenever they do have a strong outing, it seems to be sandwiched in between things that stink or not good enough. I need two, three starts, seven innings, six and two-thirds, one earned run. It has to be to that level of aggression. Or you're constantly going to be riding this wave. You're at the top, and then you're at the bottom. The problem is, you're at the bottom more than you are at the top right now. Three games under 500. A few off days this week, maybe that helps out. But you're seeing a good team in Toronto. That AL East is a juggernaut right now. I know they they still have plenty of time to click. And Bryce will only get that much more comfortable. It's not good, though, to always look up in the standings and always be fighting from behind. Is it too much to ask that at some point I want to be the team that everyone wants to chase down again? Those years from 08 and on, everyone wanted to be the Phillies. Everyone knew they'd have to take you down. Now, you're constantly fighting from behind. There's a mental Issue with that where I think it it beats you down in a mental state. And at some point, because you use so much energy crawling and everything is that much more tense, that I, I think it can wear you down over the long haul. This was my biggest concern. The way last year happened makes the viewing experience This season, different. Well, why care? Why worry? We've already seen them answer the question. When you're saying now, can they, can they, can they? Can they fight back? We've seen them do it. So give them time to operate. Well, okay, how many times are you going to rely on that? So there's a lot of things that need to change right now. They have to clean up the defense. I've been talking about the base running since the first day started. It's not as hideous as it once was. And you can make the argument, well, Castellanos was trying to get something going. And they they were having difficulties. So if 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 you apply pressure, get on second base, maybe you create life. If there's no spark, make the spark happen. I I can get behind it. I've seen more egregious base running. I've seen bigger problems on the base path than that. But when you see so many bunched together to start the season off, when something like that happens, it's just added to it. Let's say we weren't as pissed off with Brandon Marsh and Kyle Schwarber and Castellanos with previous base running mistakes, then that isn't really that much of an issue. But because you know it's a detail that has sucked, it gets talked about differently. Create the spark if the spark isn't there. 
All right. But Zach Wheeler wasn't good enough. Bailey Falter wasn't good enough. Bailey Falter is what he is. He's a fifth starter. Yo, Ranger. We need you, Ranger. Yo, Andrew. We need you, Andrew. There needs to be something to to give him a boost. Maybe it is Ranger coming in. First start he gets. He goes seven and two-thirds. One earned run. Makes a few plays as a great defensive pitcher that we know he is. There's a ball that's a dribbler down the third base side. He's hustling off the mound. He grabs the ball, chucks it over to first. Bang, bang, play. Awesome. CBP loses its mind. And then the next time Ranger goes out, he gives you six earned runs. uh, Sorry, six innings pitched, zero earned runs. And you get on the back of Ranger Suarez, Andrew Painter. The whole world is excited to see what one of the best prospects in all of baseball is about. First outing goes five. One earned run. You take it. It's a good step in the right direction. But I'm looking for an internal fire. What can be the difference in this team getting life? It's desperation. Uh, There's one that's an automatic. It's more about when, not so much if. And that's Kyle Schwarber. He hit a home run on Sunday afternoon. Knocked in some runs. Extremely important. Part of your success last year, and a big portion of it, was go look at how many bombs that dude hit. So when June comes around... There's another one, and, and I, I am pretty confident that it's a no-brainer lock. It'll happen. So there's one that's already organically waiting in the way. It's more what series, who the opponent will be. Maybe Boston Game 3 was the one to have it happen. We'll find out, but you're, you'll need more. Nick Castellanos has been amazing. There's a part of it, but they haven't been able to put it together yet. And if their starting pitching cleaned it up, I think that's what can help them move in that direction. Hitting's great. When you see the stats and you look at the guys taking the ball and looking at where the game is, oh, oh, it's almost touching 10 ERA. Why do they keep losing? Oh, Schwarber's batting leadoff. That's not why they're losing. (laughs) They scored four runs. They scored three runs. Not that their offense was sensational. Not that their offense was fantastic. It wasn't. It wasn't good as a whole. Like It it wasn't just outrageous, and they scored nine runs, but they lost 10-9. You can lose baseball games with four runs. You can lose baseball games with three runs. But my point is, what Taiwan Walker gave you with the splitter, the no walks, you won that game. You scored six runs, which is more than four or three, but you can win games scoring four runs. You can win games scoring three runs. Schwarber struggled at the top. I don't get getting mad at Rob for going back to something that, wait for it, got you to the World Series. What needs to get out of your mind is there's one way to construct a lineup. 40 years ago, it wouldn't make sense for Kyle to be there. But now, it's a different game. He's not a leadoff hitter. In 1950, he wouldn't be a leadoff hitter. He's a leadoff type of hitter in today's game. Because the game is played like it's played in 2023. If it is the is the downslope of Schwarber, fine. That's why I'm I'm cool with this lineup because you can do a lot. You want to bat Turner lead off, okay. You want to bat Stott lead off, okay. You want to put Schwarber lead off, okay. You want to bat Turner second, okay. You want to put Castellanos behind Bryce Harper, okay. You want to have JT moved up, okay. Okay. I don't care. There's a lot to work with. You have a bunch of talent. 
and guys who can literally bat anywhere, one through five, one through six. That's deep. Sometimes I think there's too much of, well, you lost because someone batted third and and not fifth, and he bat fourth instead of second. I'll criticize a lineup. But let's dig deeper. I think that's too surface level. That's too easy. You're telling me the reason why you won or lost a game is because Stat batted fifth instead of first? When your starter gives up four runs? That difference is the change? Or that change is different? It just seems crazy. There's so much more to it than that decision. Like executing your pitches. Like not hitting a wall. Not collapsing when you reach a sixth inning. Got to get through six at the minimum. When staring at the top of your staff like Nola and Wheeler. But I won't hold anybody too long today because I I do know that it's a Big Sixers vibe, as it should be, and this was more in the background. This was more off to the side, second TV, maybe you watched on your iPad kind of thing. But I wanted to make sure I gave you my my two cents here. Schwarber showed a pulse, and I'm just uh, hoping that this means we get a Kyle Schwarber against Toronto that can fuel the squad with with some more home runs. Because there's nothing better than when Kyle Schwarber starts taking off. All right, everyone. That's what the weekend was. See what they can do against Toronto. Please, something. I, I beg of you. I beg of you. Thank you, guys. Catch you on the next one.